We are community. We are committed to doing everything we can to help people find their way back to God. We celebrate our relationship with God. We connect in small groups with each other. We contribute to the mission both locally and globally. We love to laugh and we live to serve. We speak God's truth and we sing His praises. We are community. We are kids, students, adults. We are one church with many locations. We give generously to further the mission. Reaching those who are far from Him. Restoring the dream of God in our neighborhoods. Reproducing the mission in others. There is room for you here. All are welcome. We, we, we are our community. Those of you who know me, I do. I, I love Christmas. Some of you go, some, a couple of you come in and said, oh man, you're doing all these services. That's so hard. I love it. I just love, love, love it. I love Christmas. And I particularly love Christmas Eve. I love, and I think part of the reason I love Christmas Eve because there's certain kind of moments. There's, there's kind of certain kind of moments. Like, like just right then, you have Alexa. You have this beautiful child who's reciting from the prophet Isaiah who says uh, the birth of a, of a Savior's coming who will be the Prince of Peace. And, and there's something about just in that moment, it's kind of like, that's exactly the way Christmas is supposed to be. It's just right. Or in a moment, you got your candles with you? You got your candles? Everybody got a candle when you came in? In a moment, we're all going to get a chance to light a candle, right? We're going to light a candle, and we're going to sing Silent Night, Holy Night as family and friends together, right? This community of people. And we're going to get to that last, the last line that says, sleep in heavenly what? Peace, Right? And I don't know about you, but for me, there's something just kind of in that moment that makes me go like, you know what? Christmas should feel just like that, that moment right there. And I, I, don't, I don't think it's just kind of simple, syrupy Christmas sentiment either. I think there's actually something inside every one of us that we long. We long for that, that kind of all year long, that peace on earth. Goodwill toward men. That ought to be just like that all year long. And maybe the reason I feel this way, and maybe you can resonate with it as well, this kind of longing for peace this Christmas, is because much of our world right now doesn't feel just like that. In fact, if we look over our shoulder in 2016 in Chicago, our own city, had more than 700 homicides more than we ever had in, 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 in the previous two decades. If we go around the world to Aleppo, Syria, there are countless civ civilian men, women, and children who are casualties in a war that they really, they want nothing to do with. If we go to our nation's capital, it's almost become kind of a symbol, no matter which side of the aisle you're sitting on or pulling for, it's become kind of almost a symbol of, of, of a deeply divided country where it feels like our leaders are more interested in pointing fingers than they are kind of solving problems. And we could go on and on on this, right, in 2016, but the, in 2016 could be a lot of things, but I don't think 2016 would be best described as peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And I'll tell you what, that is why I love Christmas. Because in Christmas, if you get, really understand Christmas, there's real hope for peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Because Christmas allows us to come together like this and turn our attentions back to that very first Christmas in a little town in the Middle East called Bethlehem when Jesus was born. And let's not forget, when Jesus was born, he was actually born into a world that was full of conflict. There, there, was, there was political conflict in Jesus' world. The Roman Empire had conquered that entire region and the way they governed was ruthless and brutal. There were, there were uprisings, there were political plots. They all had, a lot of them had murderous consequences. Read your history. There was also financial conflict in Jesus' world. There was no middle class. There was almost no way to get ahead because everyday people, imagine this, everyday people were being taxed up to 90% of their income by the Roman government. Can you imagine that? How could a working class family even survive? There was relational conflict in Jesus' world. Women were viewed as, as property. Slavery was a part of everyday life. And deep divides pitted one religion against another. 
and peace on earth, goodwill toward men seemed every bit as distant that first Christmas, maybe even more so than it does in 2016. But in the middle of all this, okay, the prophet Isaiah foretells that one day would come a child who would enter into this conflicted world and he would be called the Prince of Peace. And this child, yes, he would bring a unique wisdom. And yes, he'd bring extraordinary power. And yes, he would bring unconditional love. But to every one of us, he would also offer this one-of-a-kind peace. Because he would come as the Prince of Peace. Now, here's a little bit of the problem. When I say the word peace, here's what we often think of. When, we, when I hear peace, we think of, well, a, a time when there's no war. Right? Peace is a time when there's no war. It, we, 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 like it's, a, it's a pause between conflicts. There's peace talks. Or it's a temporary period where there's an absence of conflict. But the peace that's used to describe the Prince of Peace is so much more than just a temporary kind of pause from fighting. It's more than that. The word that's used for the Prince of Peace is this word. Say this word after me. Shalom. Let's try that again. Shalom. Okay, if you're not familiar with this word, the, the, the word shalom isn't just the temporary absence of conflict or like a pause where now all of a sudden we're waiting for the next fight to begin or the next war to begin, but instead shalom actually means an ongoing, kind of never-ending, internal inner peace where things feel like what it's supposed to feel like all year long. That's what it means in the Prince of Peace. And see, Jesus, Jesus did, hear me on this, come to change the world out there. But his strategy was to start by changing people inside here. Do me, do me a favor, would you go ahead, go ahead and just put your hand right here on your heart. The Prince of Peace came that first Christmas, all right, to bring complete peace inside here no matter what you're going through this afternoon. The Prince of Peace came to bring a wholehearted kind of never-ending peace in here, no matter what you might be anxious about this afternoon. The Prince of Peace came to bring this ongoing shalom, no matter what you might be troubled about. And in fact, he said these very words upon his arrival. He said, peace I leave to you. Peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives, which is just kind of a peace that's just the absence of conflict waiting for the next war or fight to begin, but instead what I give you is something, so don't let your, the kind of peace where you do not have to let your hearts be troubled and you do not have to be afraid. And when Jesus, when he came, here's what he came on that first Christmas, when he came as the Prince of Peace, he says, yes, there's gonna be trouble out there, but even though there's trouble out there, I can still, there can still be peace in here. And that's the, that's the beginnings of something very important for you and the rest of the world. Yeah, out there, wars may rage. Out there, there may be injustice, there may be prejudice, there may be racism, out there. Out there, our marriages may struggle. Out there, and some of you know what I'm talking about, some of these things, you know, there's mistakes that are made, or our kids are a challenge to us, or our, our schools are, we're having a tough time in school, or there's financial difficulties to overcome, or loss, and we all go through this painful. But he promises there can still be a shalom, an inner peace, in here, what he's saying is, and, and hang on to this, in the midst of your trouble, if I'm with you, you don't have to be troubled. You hear that? In the midst of your trouble, whatever it is you're going through, you don't have to be troubled. Because there's shalom. And the peace that Jesus came to bring, I'm telling you, it changes everything. But it starts by changing things in here. I want, I want you to meet Cassie. Cassie understands the shalom. My name is Cassie Oakshot and I've been attending community for six months. Before I came to community, my relationship with God was kind of non-existent. I didn't really lean on him and I wasn't sure of who he was or what influence he could have on my life. So my parents divorced when I was finishing high school. And I definitely didn't see it coming. So I think any kind of constant that I thought I had wasn't there anymore. The reason everything hit me so hard was because I was away from home and then I came back and everything was suddenly completely different and everything I ever knew was kind of shattered. It's like a very isolating feeling when everything you've ever known is gone. 
It's kind of hard to describe um, what it's like to uh, like hit rock bottom. Um, but it's like a very lonely feeling. Like you don't want to risk sharing your story with people because you don't want it to be rejected. Basically the divorce um, and hand in hand with opening up to people and having them kind of leave my side too. That's like what led me to uh, my lowest point. And I was finally like at a low enough point where I was like, I don't have anything to lose. And I just, I don't want to feel like this. And I know that there's more to life than feeling like this. I reached out for um, medical help and then they connected with me with a therapist. She just said that I needed to reach out to more people and I needed to um, let people that wanted to help me help me because that's just not in my personality type. From there, she was like, you need to connect with someone, you need to join some kind of group because you're not in a good place and you're never gonna be in a good place if you're not connecting with people. Basically went on the community website and found an alpha group that was starting um, in the beginning of the summer. I still can't believe that I like made the move to like go to the first gathering and got myself in here, but I did. It was like intimidating before I actually stepped in the doors, but then once I was here, um, I felt very much at home. So in Alpha and in connecting with different people from the church, I did have a overwhelming feeling of peace just because I was myself and I was um, in a place that I was accepted. More than anything, since I started coming to church, I feel, I know that God is in control and that He's going to make the right decision for me, regardless of if it's necessarily what I want or what I see in my future. He's kind of got it covered and I just go with it and trust in Him. I feel like a weight is lifted off my shoulders and I feel um, an inner peace that I've never had before. In November, we wrapped up the Starting Over series and on Baptism Sunday, I made the decision to be baptized. Something that stuck with me is you don't need to wait until you're you've got it all figured out to get baptized. You just need to go for it and kind of figure it out after. But it was like amazing. I like still, like I can't think about it and not smile. It was like amazing and any kind of doubt or fear that I had, um, like even things that I didn't realize were holding me back, like it's like I released them. It was just cleansing for me and it really was a starting over point. I was a new person. I'm telling you, the, uh, the peace, okay, the shalom that Jesus has to offer, it can change anything that's going on in your life right now. And um, I was talking to somebody, I know we got, about, we got all the kids in here, so I got about 10 minutes to wrap this thing up before they turn on me, <laughs> all right? So here's, here's what I wanna, I wanna say this to you, okay? I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what, as, as, as Jesus even mentioned, what the troubles are. And for some of us here, um, I mean, it, it, there's enough folks here in this room, for a whole bunch of us, there's family stuff where there's conflict, right? For some of us, you're worried about your kids and you have real reason to worry. And some of us are kids and we got our own stuff we're dealing with with school and our own families and friends. For some of us, you come here and it, it, it's fights with people that you thought were some of your closest allies, your best friends. For some of us, it's, it's a turmoil in our workplace that's almost unbearable. For some of us in this room too, there's situations financially that, that, are, that are so challenging as we, think of, we, 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 as we think about next year, we can't even enjoy Christmas this year. For some of us, there's things that feel like a little out of our control, like our emotions or it's even a spiritual unrest that kind of says there's gotta be something more. And I think it's safe to assume that probably for almost every one of us in this room, life, it gives us some trouble. And here you go. Here's the good news of Christmas. The good news of Christmas is that the Prince of Peace has shown up. The Prince of Peace has shown up. The Prince of Peace broke into a dark, dark, conflicted world that very first Christmas to offer peace to any and all who will receive it. 
And that same Prince of Peace, that same Prince of Peace is here this Christmas and offers to break into your dark and conflicted world and to bring that shalom right here. And so let me, let me just tell you, from my own experience, my experience, Jesus can bring peace. Take Cassie's story there and let it inspire you that he can bring peace. Let all these people around you, because all of us in this room, we're either here because at one point we were looking for that peace or maybe because we found that peace. Know this, the Prince of Peace can break through and bring that shalom. So no matter what troubles we have, we don't have to be troubled. I wanna offer you this. If there is something going on for you and you're going, you know what, that's what I need. I, I do, I just need it. I need the peace that's gonna be okay. I need something that says, even though there's troubles, I don't have to be troubled. I'm gonna ask you, just go ahead and put your hand on your heart. And I wanna say a prayer, all right? And I'm gonna say a prayer for all of us, but I'm gonna ask God, because he can do this kind of thing to make it specifically for you. Father God, we come to you here on this Christmas and we know that you showed up as wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, but also Prince of Peace. In every one of us, we come with our own troubles, our own unique situations, our own conflicts, our own anxieties, our fears. And Lord, we ask, and I ask for every person here who's hold, holding their hand in their heart, I ask that in a way that's undeniably from you, that you bring into their life a shalom. That over the next several days, they look back on this moment, they go like, man, I don't know what happened, but it's just like, God gave me a peace. And that's a, that, 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 that it's you, that it can only happen through you. I ask that you do that. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Go ahead and uh, grab your candle if you would. I want to finish with, uh, with a story uh, from some research that our teaching team did. And it goes back to the Christmas Eve of 1914 when World War I had just begun. And German forces had battled the British, British and, and French in the Belgian countryside and weeks and weeks of fighting had come to a standstill as both sides have been hunkered down in man-made trenches for months now. There was about a 70-yard stretch between the two armies that's known as, you know, no man's land. And no man could go there and expect to live. And it was cold, and it was snowy, and both sides had suffered many casualties. Now, there are a lot of different ways that the story gets told, but all of them acknowledge that something dramatically changed when the German soldiers set up some Christmas trees with candles right in front of their trench and they began to sing Stille Nacht, Helge Nacht or um, as we know it's Silent Night, Holy Night. Well, after hearing several verses, the French and the British began to join in this familiar Christmas carol in their own language. And then together, they sang Christmas carols in the dark, that dark, cold night on Christmas Eve. And as each song would end, they would shout Christmas greetings back and forth across the field. Then at one point, the Germans put up a white flag on top of one of their trees, signaling they'd like to have a truce, a ceasefire. And then after some time, the French and the British also held up a white flag of their own, which then prompted one soldier to dare to get out of the trench and wander in no man's land towards the other side. And then someone on the other side joined him. And then soon others joined them together. And before you knew it, both sides were standing together in the middle of no man's land, singing carols, welcoming each other, exchanging Christmas greetings, shaking each other's hands. And this was the beginning of a glorious week of peace. The two armies, they held joint funerals and helped each other bury their dead. They played soccer games together. They traded tobacco and chocolate. And when Sunday came around, they held a worship service together. And in honor of the Prince of Peace, they laid down their guns and they spent one glorious week of peace. 
together. Sadly, we know that after that week, they returned to their trenches and the fighting then stretched on for three more years. Which on this Christmas causes us to only ask, if only, if only, if only, if only the Prince of Peace had allowed to, been allowed to reign beyond just a week at Christmas time. Imagine, imagine how much different history would have been. Imagine how much different our world might be. And if we dare to kind of look into the future, imagine if we could make different choices, how different our world in the future might be. See, we come together like this once a year and we sing Silent Night, Holy Night. And we get to that last phrase, sleep in heavenly peace. And in that moment, it feels that's, that's just the way Christmas is supposed to be. It's just the way life is meant to be. But for too many of us, I think it becomes a momentary truce. See, the peace that Jesus came to bring is not just a temporary peace. It's not just meant for one week in December. What we're meant is we're meant to receive his peace and then live it on throughout the whole year. And what he offers every one of us is a shalom right in here. See, Jesus knew the way to change the world, okay, was not from the outside in, but instead, check this out, from the inside of every one of us out. And if he can bring peace into my heart and bring peace into your heart and your heart and your heart and your heart and every man, woman, and child, if he can bring peace into every one of our hearts, what it does is then with his peace inside of there, it gives us the courage to get out of our trenches, to meet one another in our own no man's land and to bring peace into every broken and conflicted part of our world. But it starts when we invite him to bring his peace, the Prince of Peace, and let him reign in here the whole year through. Here's my challenge. As we sing Silent Night, Holy Night, and we hold this candle, and it becomes that moment, like, man, that's the way Christmas is supposed to be. That's the way life's supposed to be. Let's not let this be a moment. But instead of every one of us will commit ourselves to let that Prince of Peace reign from now on, it can actually be a movement. A movement of peace that starts here and emanates all across our town, our state, our country, and around the world. Because that's exactly what Jesus meant when he came, and exactly his design when he came that first Christmas. sing together.
And may the light of Christ emanate from every one of your lives. And may the Prince of Peace and his shalom forever on rule in your hearts. And uh, to every one of you, all right, a very, very Merry Christmas.